George and I are out here working on my W123 Mercedes again. We're talking about one of the most commonly neglected maintenance points on these cars. That being power steering fluid. Most of the information that you'll see on changing the power steering fluid on these cars involves either sucking out the reservoir in the pump with like a turkey baster or fluid extractor of some kind, or removing the return line, putting it in a container, starting the car, and then refilling the reservoir as quickly as it's pumped out. Now, both of those have some major drawbacks. Um, sucking out the reservoir doesn't really have any inherent dangers or risks, uh, but you don't get nearly all the fluid out, and doing the hose removal method, uh, you have to be really quick because that pump moves a lot of oil, and you don't want it to run dry. Um, so what if there was a better solution? What if I told you that there's a drain plug on the steering box and if you unscrew the drain plug, uh, all the fluid drains out? What are you gonna need to accomplish this process? Well, first and foremost, you're gonna need some power steering fluid. Now I've opted to just use some generic O'Reilly's brand power steering fluid and I'm sure this may not be the best solution or the perfect oil for it, but it's better than the modern ATFs because it doesn't have friction modifiers that would cause unnecessary wear in my power steering system. And it's rated as a hydraulic oil. So in theory, it should work fairly good for this. Um, also, you're gonna to want to have a power steering filter. This is a MAN H85. You're going to need a 12 millimeter wrench or socket and ratchet, a small screwdriver or needle nose pliers, something to pick the filter up out of the reservoir as it's kind of down in there a bit, as well as some rags, a jack, jack stands, some lights to work underneath and a drain pan because we're draining the oil. So to get started, let me move the camera over here so you can see the power steering pump and we'll talk about what we're gonna do. If you have an OM617 engine, this is gonna be the location of your power steering pump, which also doubles as the reservoir. So you're gonna to wanna to loosen this wing nut and watch out, this cap is spring-loaded. So make sure you hold it so it doesn't go flying. I want to remove the cap, which eh, it's got some nasty grunge on there, as well as this spring. Remove that, set it out of the way. Now we're going to take our little screwdriver. Needle nose pliers could also work for this. Kind of reach down in somewhat near the um, post there and see you can grab that filter up out of there and just kind of tip it on its side and set it back on there so that that can drain down into the reservoir. Now that we've got our old filter drip drying here, we can elevate the car, put it on some jack stands so that we can still turn the wheel back and forth. We're gonna turn the steering wheel all the way to the left as far as it will go. Then we're gonna crawl under the car and get to the drain bolt on the steering box. So let's have a look at where we're going to go to get to that and then we're going to drain the fluid using our 12 millimeter ratchet and socket 12 millimeter socket on the ratchet so let's crawl underneath and take a look at that now with the car safely on jack stands the steering wheel turned all the way to the left we can crawl underneath kind of right where this cardboard is right under the driver's side fender once we get under there, you'll see the pitman arm coming off the steering box, as well as the tie rod on the left and the drag link, which is like the center tie rod on the right. And if you follow that pitman arm up, you'll see here's the steering box where the pitman arm is attached to. Right over to the left of that pitman arm is this little wet plug. It's wet because I unscrewed it to make sure that was indeed the drain plug. Um, so essentially at this point, you're gonna to wanna to get your 12 millimeter wrench or socket and ratchet, take it, put it on there, and then immediately throw it into your drain pan. Um, or at least that's what I did. You could choose to loosen the uh, 
uh, drain plug up if you would prefer that. But uh, once you get that drain plug unscrewed, you'll be able to watch the nasty oil drain out of your steering system. Once it's slowed down to a drip like this, it's pretty much as much as you're going to get out. You could try turning the wheel side to side, and you might get a little bit more out, but at this point, I'm going to take the drain plug and put it back in. Now this drain plug, you need to watch, it's hard to see, it has a copper crush washer. So you don't need to put this on crazy tight, but it needs to be tight enough for that crush washer to do its job and seal up the fluid. And at this point, crawl out from under the car, and we'll begin refilling from up above. Now we can remove our old filter, which is basically dried out. We'll discard that. We can grab our fresh new filter. Much cleaner. And we will drop that down in. Now you may need to use your screwdriver in order to get it level so that it will set all the way down in where it's supposed to go. And at this point, I'm going to set my spring in and we'll begin filling with new power steering fluid. So, essentially I'm just going to fill this up. Until it's at that mark down in there. And now, because our car is still elevated, I'm going to go and open the door and spin the wheel from side to side, back and forth several times, just with the engine off, to circulate this through the system. You'll be able to watch this level drop. Bubbles. Looks like it's getting kind of low, so I'm going to stop turning the wheel so that I can top this back up. Up to that mark. And repeat, turning the wheel back and forth again. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Now you may notice we're getting a hint of red back in there again. That's because it's basically impossible using this method or any method to get 100% of the residue out of there. So what I'm going to do is run the car around for a while like this and then do this process again. A gallon of fluid doesn't cost that much. You can probably do four or five changes in this with a gallon of fluid. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a couple flushes, and chances are it's not that dark. I can see the writing on the filter clearly, so we should be in good shape. I'm just going to top up my level one last time, right up to that mark. We can start the car and see how our power steering feels. That feels nice and smooth. 
So you can see what I'm saying more now that it's stirred up. It's got a reddish tinge to it, but I can actually see through it. So we'll close this up. Put our wing nut back on. And drive our car around for a little while. Let's have a look at what the old fluid looked like because I caught a little bit in a jar just so that I could see how dirty it was. George, if you set over here for a moment. I've got this really high powered flashlight. I don't know, this is probably gonna look horrible. But I don't know, you can't really see it, but shining this through it, it is, I don't know, that's perhaps a subjective test, but for me, I can shine the light through this and it just completely absorbs all of the light from that flashlight. And if you've seen how bright this light is in person, like these things hurt your eyes, they're so bright. Great for working on stuff though. Come on back, George. So with seeing how filthy dirty that oil was, no doubt, even just changing it once, if it's still contaminated, like mine is, it's going to make a difference. It's going to improve things because that filter doesn't catch everything. As you can tell, whatever nast is in that stuff, it's pretty gross. So hopefully this has helped you get your car back up and running, keep things up to par and uh, enjoy it for many years to come. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.